Well, it is a giant mint green wall. But if you ask me, anything is better than uh, that old paneling. So something just occurred to me. Uh, the more and more I think about it, and there will be no decisions made today, but uh, this wall is not original to the building. And I think it's just basically a divider wall. Maybe it was put in when they turned this into an office. They put paneling on the wall and then they dropped ceiling and uh, made it a smaller space that could be heated and climate control because this was the office. This is where the, most of the time was spent. So, uh, and all this is basically is uh, floor to ceiling two by fours. And they just put quarter round all the way around the inside to hold this masonite material in. So it's like an ultra lightweight, you know, they're not every 16 inches, they're more like, you know, 24 inches or something spaced there. Well, maybe, I don't know, 20 inches maybe. Anyway, uh, it's ultra light and it's just a divider wall, that is all it is. And what it does is, now that room's kind of dark, but this room is super tiny as well. And this room is super tiny and both of them are too tiny to really get a lot of use out of. Um, so I'm thinking this wall probably is gonna need to go. But on the upside, this is gonna be a great big, another great big space in the building. So uh, like I said, no decisions for today. Uh, nothing's gonna happen in that direction today, but uh, uh, I definitely have that in mind. So, okay. Last little bit is right there. Wow, that pile is literally getting too high to throw more stuff on. Now, I look taller because I'm in front of it, but, uh, it's actually over my head back there. So. Okay, so there we go. It's not by any means a gorgeous, beautiful room, but it's, uh, it's my room, it's empty. And uh, it is one more space in the building that is cleared up and is at blank canvas stage. It's the stage where I can come in and actually do uh, repairs, do, you know, move it toward whatever its final incarnation is gonna be. It's impossible to do anything like that uh, until I go through that epic process of just getting the building cleared out, cleaned out, empty, and uh, yeah, to a place where I can actually work, so. All right, everybody, hello. Uh, it is, uh, the sun's going down right now because I had a really long day, busting hump. And uh, today's a little bit of a, a different kind of a video. So there's some history involved with this video. And uh, I got contacted by a YouTube viewer who is a historian and who lives here locally in the area in Charleston, Illinois, and they said, uh, Come over, I have something to tell you, and I have something for you. So, uh, who knows? Let's go see what it is. Uh, I have to go home and pick up a, a different vehicle, and we're going to head. It's about 45 minutes away in Oakland, Illinois. So, uh, come along with me. Okay, got a different vehicle and a trailer. Because, uh, apparently, it's not supposed to fit in my nephew's little Mustang there. So, wow, look at those. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. These are from Charleston's brown shoe, right? I guess, you, you have to ask her more about it. Okay, wow, that's so incredible. Whenever you see these on antique stores, they always say not for sale. Okay. Yeah, because they're hard to come by. They are really amazing. Wow, that's so incredible. She got a lot of stuff, guys. Before she got sick, she worked down at Ashmore at Coffee's Antique Mall. Oh, yeah, that's right here. Yeah, Yeah, right down the road, there. 
Wow. Well, if I worked in an antique mall, this is one of the things I'd want too. So I don't know if she got them out. You have to ask her. Okay, we'll ask her the story. Okay, it is the next day, and last night, uh, a lady named Teet had me come over and had a gift for me. I think I've already showed a little bit. Uh, but when I got here last night, I realized I didn't have the keys to the building, so I had to place them outside. Look at those beauties. Uh, I learned a lot about them because I said, well, I can replace all the wood slats, and she said, well, uh, some of them had wood slats and some of them, you know, part of them didn't because they would actually hang uh, shoes as well. So, but I think uh, for me, I'll just uh, replace all of the, uh, the shelving there 100%. I think that's what would look the best. And it is so exciting. They were in her garden and roses were growing on them, but she was kind enough when she saw my video, I had mentioned, actually what I said was, <clears throat> all of these shoe carts probably still exist somewhere in the world. And uh, I wonder where they are. Are they, you know, 60 feet down in a landfill or do people actually still have all of them or what? Uh, and then right after that video, I got, a, I got a message from her saying, I've got two of those in my garden. So uh, I'm so excited about these. And uh, looking at them, the only thing I can see that's missing is, uh, so this one has a welded bar in there. And the, uh, the welded uh, push bar on this one is gone. They're not welded. These were held in with bolts. No bolt hole. Bolt hole. So this was, these were wooden and that's why they're gone. So uh, they were in the garden and the wheels are kind of seized up. So I'll need to fix that part. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think, yeah, I think uh, the building provides less than a few feet away. Check this out. There's a piece of pipe that is the exact same color and uh, probably really close to the same dimensionality or the same dimensions. And I can just cut a section of that uh, and put it right here and it would match perfectly. But I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to put as much wood into these frames as possible. So the trick will be finding uh, the right kind of wood that is the right age and is right for them. So uh, that'll be a future project in a future video. So I uh, need to get these inside. They're a little bit clunky and awkward for a single person to carry, but I'm gonna give it my best uh, college try. <laughs> to uh, go get some sharper clips. These old rusty ones are not doing the job. The good thing is when people installed them, they just uh, stuck them up here and basically just twisted them uh, because that means I can just untwist them. So I don't even have to clip them, which is nice. <laughs> really nice. I just climbed up here and realized that this uh, little um, cap that screws on and holds this up ooh, was inside there. 
which is really nice because a few of them are missing. And I don't know how to replace those. They're pretty specific and they look uh, like they might not be able to be replaced. You know these are quality because uh, this thing is steel. It's not lightweight aluminum, so uh, that's nice. Okay, so we got all those little stragglers out of there, and uh, not a difficult job. Just super time consuming. Going up, getting the wire off, coming back down, moving the ladder, and uh, it just eats up the time. There are still some electrical wires hanging down, but I have a policy of not touching any of that. Okay. This is gonna look a lot better on the scrap pile than it does hanging out of that ceiling. What I tell you, it's artwork. All right. Well, I started out thinking that was a great place for them, but it's, they're covering up my cool cast iron sink. Uh, but yeah, so that's probably where they're gonna sit till the, uh, till the spring. And uh, that is like a totally doable project. The only challenge is having the right taste and getting the right stuff to complete it. Getting the wheels, the casters freed up. And uh, yeah, for sitting in a garden, you know, in the weather, in the elements, they are in remarkably good condition. So those will not be uh, antiques for sale because they are, you know, in the sweet spot for a memento from this building. So. I'll do those, and then maybe I'll put those up in the front hallway when you first come in the building. Uh, they'll be visible. I can put some framed photos on them and that kind of thing. So, uh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, so this room is a future cleanup project in itself. Uh, but I definitely want to get at least two of those Art Deco uh, lamps down to replace. That one has some serious corrosion on the side, which is really sad, but maybe it could be used for parts. Uh, the two in the back look like they're in pretty good condition. So uh, I think I'll pull the light in here and bring the ladder in and see if I can get those out. You can see them right there, right there. Uh, slight change of plan. I decided to go with that one because it's a little bit more accessible and I can see that it looks great. It's in really good condition. So uh, I don't know what I'm gonna need to get that out, but uh, I'm gonna get it out. Uh, and then one of these guys, I need to get the whole uh, apparatus inside. So there's the cover there and uh, 
Oh, the cool thing is all of these have those little knobs on them, so I can use them for parts, whatever I don't use, and replace the ones in the other room. But the uh, the little hangers that are inside there, I need those because in the other room there's one that's missing everything, the guts and everything. So uh, I'm going to try to get 100% of this one with the hanger, the wiring harness, the supports, and then the lamp as well. So I've been wondering if these were glass or plastic, and uh, I honestly, I think they're glass. They could, it could go either way, but uh, when I first touched it here, I thought it was plastic, but there's a sharp edge on it. Yeah, I think it's glass, which is really nice. Okay, I have no idea what tools I'm gonna even need here. This guy's going in the pocket. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Okay, so while we're on track with some of the uh, blessings that have come my way, uh, I guess it's time to do mail call. And that's something that I tend to kind of shy away from doing because uh, I always think that when I see that on YouTube channel, I, I, I feel like it's the YouTuber uh, presenting that and in a way it's advertising that, hey, I receive stuff. You can, you can send me stuff too, so, <laughs> which isn't what I want. But on the other hand, I tend to overthink things a little bit too much and I am grateful, so I want to express that. Um, and the first thing that I had was these three brackets. So these are information um, presentation devices. I don't know what you would call them, but they go on lockers. And then the person whose locker it is, their name would go into this little slot. And there are three of them. What do you know? I can use three of them for that locker. So that was really uh, a great surprise. It was a very thoughtful gift. Uh, for somebody that I've known through YouTube for quite some time. So his name is Bear and he's from Canada and he has a YouTube channel. And uh, I met him through his YouTube channel way back before I was even posting uh, videos about this building. And uh, I was, I remember to this day, I was looking for a video about how to test Bakelite. And he had a video about using Simichrome to test if it's real Bakelite or not. And uh, I wrote him a message and we became fast friends. And ever since then, he's been so helpful, uh, kind of a mentor for me. So it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty awesome. So, so just the other day, I was uh, talking to him because I am interested in learning how to tell the difference between real and fake porcelain enamel signs. Uh, there are so many fakes out there and the fakers are getting really, really good because I sent a couple uh, to him, you know, photos of them, and he's like, fake, fake. And uh, I was like, no way, those look real, I'm thinking to myself. But then uh, they were posted to another board and other uh, people who have a lot of experience also identified them as fake. And so I have a long way to go, a lot to learn. So uh, anyway, I'll be putting those on. And I, uh, I encourage you to check out his channel. He has kind of a... a a real modest YouTube channel that's focused on uh, helping other people who uh, are pickers, who are, you know, doing a grind, doing hustling, finding things and reselling. And he has lots of uh, helpful tutorial type videos that are, you know, very giving of him. He just, he just talks about that stuff. And so find the link for his uh, YouTube channel down in the description if you'd like to go check him out and subscribe. So, okay, moving on. The next thing that I have to share with you guys, oh, you'll know Bear's YouTube channel. He sent me a sticker, so that's his logo. You see that? You'll know it's the right one. Check out this guy. This is a pump, and this came in a care package from Neil, uh, who will be here to work on the elevator in just a couple months. Uh, we had a video where I was showing some power washing in a few of the rooms 
and uh, we were doing it from a reservoir that we had on a trailer and there was no gravity flow. It, was, it wasn't pressurized and so it wasn't quite enough to feed the power washer. And uh, so Neil sent this. I guess you just drop this down in the reservoir and it will supply uh, pressurized water for the power washer, which is awesome. And uh, also, in the care package is more temporary lighting. So I can actually, with this, I can light up the whole, uh, what is it, the whole east wing of the building, which will be awesome. And even set some light bulbs. So that's pretty cool. And then something I wasn't, I, I, I was really surprised by. I was gonna say something I wasn't expecting, but I wasn't expecting any of it. This is a device that you put on a drill, a regular power drill, and it shears metal. So I don't know to what gauge that is, but any of the tin and stuff for the projects that I've talked about on the channel, uh, that'll be helpful. So I can cut those out. And the reason it'll be helpful. Uh, over here, I have these uh, furniture pieces that I've been wanting to, uh, you know, get fully restored. <laughs> restored maybe is a little bit ambitious, but uh, to get those uh, missing drawers replaced. And they have these uh, pulls on them that are just basically folded tin. And I have a, an old fire door laying out on the ground out there with, uh, <clears throat> with tin on it. It's basically one of these. Uh, they do not have asbestos in them. They're just wood doors. I know that because uh, of the one that I have outside is, is exposed. But this tin is perfect for, uh, for making those. And that tool is the perfect tool for cutting out the pieces that I can fold and I can make a seamless replacement on those uh, drawers. So that was really awesome and super thoughtful. So thank you to Neil. Uh, and we're not done yet. We got one more. Uh, this was a really special one that I uh, was really impressed with and very grateful for. And uh, so if you recall, Neil had sent me a uh, an old manual. There was an Odell's electric um, reference guide and it had basically the exact elevator motor that we're going to be dealing with in it so that was really cool someone sent me something similar but it is a 10 volume collection and it is super educational and check this out uh, these are uh, very old very old as you can tell 10 volumes it's the Hawkins electrical guide number one through number 10 and uh, they're great because they're a guide. They're for people who are, you know, learning. People like me. <laughs> and uh, these books back in the day were incredible. Look at those graphics. Oh my gosh. Oh, what, what did I just see? That's what I thought. Um, but anyway, the graphics are amazing. I thought for a second I saw an old elevator, but that's not what that is. Um, Incredible, love this stuff. And it's so educational and uh, I'm so grateful. He, uh, he mailed these to me and uh, I am so grateful. Those are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So, man, am I tempted to use a pry bar. <laughs> It's uh, it, it's hanging on those uh, little metal arms. I can't see what's back there. I'm gonna have to go look at the one in the other room. I uh, can't focus on it. That basically told me nothing. Sorry about the focus. I just won't focus. Okay, well I found out that it will spin, so I'm guessing that means it's threaded in some way. So uh, this glass thing I noticed is really loose. So I'm going to remove these pieces of glass and get them protected, and then I'll try to spin it off. Maybe that's the way to get it down. Yeah, those are glass, for sure. Which is really nice. What do they call that? Uh, Opaline or something like that? So I'm going to go get those 
somewhere where uh, they're gonna be protected and not break. This way. I'm afraid that the weight of it, once it goes, is gonna jerk me off this ladder. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, I survived that one. Still here to laugh about it. Okay. Right there in the center is a threaded hole. I don't know why my camera will not focus today. Anyway, you can see that hole right in the middle. That's threaded. And uh, that's what was hanging it up. So I know how to get them down now. say bad words but sometimes I feel like doing it. so heavy was not calculating that they do not make stuff like they used to good grief oh, oh wow that thing has got to be 50 pounds Man, I am out of breath. Good grief. Oh, maybe not 50, but it's 40. That's for sure. Let's get a little good look at it. That's cast aluminum. It's pretty cool. Is that Art Deco or is that like maybe a little bit later? Like 1930s. Or 40s even, I don't know. Looks kind of Art Deco to me because of that right there. But I'm not gonna go ahead and hang this up. I need to rewire all of them for LED. And uh, I don't know if that can be done while they're hanging or if I'm gonna have to bring them all down in order to do that and then put them all back up. Probably the smart way to do it, so. Uh, I'm not going to worry about hanging it just yet. Just got to get one more down, and that room will be complete. When I do take those down to uh, rewire them to LED, that is going to be the moment that I really appreciate the uh, scaffolding because I can just spin them off and lower them down and uh, not have to worry about a precarious, rickety old ladder. So, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, one other thing. So this place never ceases to be an enigma. So uh, I expect that these are really old, and there's a number of reasons for that. There's no plastic on them. Uh, they're very heavy. They're really well made, and they have a really dated look to them. Very dated. Uh, but when I come, and actually right there, that conduit that leads to it's been painted the same as the ceiling so it was all painted at the same time which says older but it's underneath that paint is kind of newer shiny conduit uh that is definitely newer conduit going to them so i don't know if they uh ran new conduit at some point it's really weird look at that 
uh, that's a water sprinkler pipe there. And it's uh, making that lamp kind of swing over a little bit. So it seems to me that maybe they were installed later, but they could have been taken from a different area of the building and then rehung here. I don't know because the lights are really old. Conduit, not so much. So uh, one thing I could maybe do, and I think I will, is get a ladder and go up and look at the wire that's running to them. If it's that really old cloth wire, that will tell me a lot as well. So uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. What year do you think these were made and what year do you think they were installed? Okay, so that's about it for today. I'm gonna go and pull that last one down and then I'm gonna call it a day. So a uh, little bit of progress today. Stay tuned next time and uh, we'll get into that next room that I just uh, mentioned before. So thanks guys, I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.